You're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Arecchio, and this is news that makes you healthier. Randy, really interesting interview that you are going to be getting today. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got a chance to meet him in the green room, mm -hmm. uh, flipped through his book. And so I have lots of questions about estrogen. Of course, being a guy, I don't know a lot about estrogen. Uh -huh. So I'd like to know what it's responsible for, right. kind of what he's seeing in his own clinical practice. Uh, but this guy is a world expert on estrogen. So it, it, it's good that we find. got him on the show. And we have now the most, the, the newest, most scientific research because obviously the field of health is always changing. So I'm excited to hear what you, what and, you two talk about. And I about. think what's good is, is, you know, he's on faculty at Harvard, mm -hmm. but he's known internationally. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and, and the medical doctors that are reading this book, they're giving it to their patients. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's a hot topic. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get him on the show. So we're going to go to the interview. You're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, estrogen. And with us, we have an expert on the topic. Uh, we have Dr. Seibel. Dr. Seibel, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Randy. Great to be here. So your book, The Estrogen Window, you, we should mention you're a world expert on this topic. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. Infertility 10,000 women I've taken care of. So with more this. than 10,000 women. Yeah. So let's begin with, because I know Krista interviewed you uh, already, mm -hmm. but for people that want to know, what is estrogen What's good about it for a woman? What, what's, let's say the 40 plus crowd, 45 plus crowd, why would they want, what, what is estrogen responsible for is what I'm trying to say. Wow, well, remember when you went through puberty, if you're a woman, you remember that suddenly you got curves, you got breasts, you got uh, a whole different mindset. There were boys out there. Estrogen does all of those things. And what happens is, is that Estrogen sustains those things as you go through your reproductive years. And estrogen also, for reproduction, prepares the lining of the uterus for pregnancy. Now, when you go through perimenopause, that window of about 8 to 10 years into menopause, it's like puberty backwards. Can you tell me those symptoms quickly Oh, sure. on the perimenopause? Well, basically, you get moody, foggy, you might get a little bit bitchy, you find that you can't sleep as well, you can get heart palpitations, you can get changes in your breast, your bladder can get a little more sensitive, you can get vaginal dryness, you get lower libido. The list goes on for a while. It, is it combined with like irregular menstrual cycles? You have just said the one that I left out, which is probably the most frequent symptom, and that is your cycles get irregular again. Just like they were irregular when they were starting, they get irregular going back, and those bad hot flashes that are the second most common symptom. So estrogen, it, do you look at it as a youth hormone? No I, no, I look at it as a salve though for many of the organs of the body because it does help to support almost all the tissues in the body. Okay, now for the women that you see in your practice, they've got the brain fog, like you say, mm -hmm. vaginal dryness you mentioned, irregular menstrual cycles, mm -hmm. they're having mood swings, uh, hot flashes, they can't sleep the way they used to, as you mentioned in your book. When you replace, and unless, assuming, because I looked through your book, you know, mm -hmm. that the diet, the whole person matters, mm -hmm. that they're eating well, trying to sure. de-stress, de etc. What When you give them estrogen that mm -hmm. they may be lost with age, what do you see? What transformations do you see? Oh boy, I'll tell you what, I get a lot of thank you notes. I'm not saying estrogen is for everyone, but I will say that estrogen is safe and beneficial for most women. Okay. And for those women who can take it, the benefits way. Like what do you see? Well, what you see is a whole different person. You really? see someone who can actually begin to sleep again. You see one whose disposition changes, her memory gets better, her libido picks up. She'll say her skin looks a little bit shinier. Uh, this is a, a tremendous transformation for women. And it's not only that, but they feel better about themselves. The quality of their work goes up because they're sleeping better. You know, there's been a study done of, uh, in corporate America where they interviewed 500,000 women. They looked at them who had one symptom, hot flashes. Half of the women had their hot flashes treated and the other half didn't. The half who didn't have their hot flashes treated, just that one symptom, went to the doctor on average six more times per year. And for this $250,000, uh, 250,000 women, it was about a $140 million problem for 
businesses, not to mention that work productivity went down and, and the work efficiency went down, workability, they had more absenteeism. So it's a huge problem for women in the workplace, for women in relationships, for women in how they view themselves and with their partners. So big changes, big when, changes. When, for people that need it. Now let's take the woman, as you've helped me understand, define menopause by they haven't had a menstrual cycle in a year or more. Right. Okay? Now what about those women that say, yeah, but I feel fine. I feel pretty good. I go to the gym, I eat right. I don't know if I want to take any hormones, something that's outside of my body. Mm -hmm. Tell me, why is it good for them? Why is it protective for them? Mm -hmm. You call it a 10-year window. Uh, a, a good 10 years. Okay. What do you say to them? Why right, is it well, good for them? You raise a really important point. So let me first of all say in response, there are two groups of women. There are the women who go through menopause more at a natural time, like age 51 at a mean. And so the women who are more later having menopause. But there's this subset of women who go through menopause at 48 or below. And 5 to 10 percent of women go into menopause between 40 and 45. Wow. For these women, not taking hormone increases their risk of heart disease, death by heart disease, increases their risk of, of depression, clinical depression, it increases suicidal ideation, it increases the risk of dementia, it increases a whole host of other medical problems. Early menopause, those women who are early, really, really I encourage you to ponder this thought of taking hormones, really. Nice. For the women who are older, and they're not old, but they're older than the younger set. So the 51 group, 49, 50, 51, if they're doing great and they're living a healthy lifestyle, they're exercising, they're sleeping, their stress is under control, their nutrition is good. But they haven't had a menstrual cycle in a year. Right. If they so are what doing, are the benefits, though, if it's the kind of person that says, I want to feel my best. Uh -huh. I want you know, this longevity crowd, the whole foods crowd, people that really want right. that edge. It's, Why should they do it? What's it good for? It's going to help to maintain their bones because you're going to lose a lot of your bone, uh, the, the calcium in your bones in the first two to three years after menopause. And if you start the estrogen in that little window of time, you're going to get all of that back. Good. It's going to help prevent plaque buildup in your heart, which is going to be helpful for you. It will. So there's studies that, oh, yeah. that show all of this. Is in, that right? A hundred percent. And let me tell you, in my book, The Estrogen Window, and now coming in paperback, The Estrogen Fix, what you're going to see is a real clarity that's easy to understand of well-documented studies that have come out in the last several years that really show and speak to these points one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one for every one of the things. So it's protective for heart. Yes. The brain. Yes. Uh, mood. Mm -hmm. Because Is it because estrogen works with all the other hormones? I realize this is a big question, right? In simplest, but is there a dummy it, down it, way to explain this to me? The brain, the, um, the heart, the vaginal tissues, the bladder, the bones, all of these organs, the skin, respond well to uh, estrogen and it sustains them. One of the things I find, I've been talking around the country when I give lectures about my book, The Estrogen Window, what I find is there's, there's the younger women who are trying to figure this thing out and then there's a group of women that come that are in their 70s. And they generally look quite well for a woman in their 70s. And they will say to me, I, I go and ask, I say, you know, you're here, you're a little beyond the time when most of the women are taking hormones. Why, why are you here? What are you hoping to gain from it? And they'll say, you know, my daughter's afraid of estrogen, and I want to make sure that I'm telling them the right thing when I tell them <laughs> to take it. So they're there looking quite fine, thank you. But they want their daughters to have those benefits, and their daughters are afraid, confused, concerned. And it's the same story over and over. Now, are women... And we talked a little bit about this in the green room, mm -hmm. but are women, is there a group of women that are saying, but breast cancer runs in my family. Right. Uh, so I've got to run from estrogen because it's going to grow cancers. What is your response to that? And, and is that a commonly held thought yes. amongst women? women? You know, the original WHI or Women's Health Initiative study suggested that breast cancer was increased as a result of taking hormones. But that original study was about estrogen combined with a synthetic progesterone called Provera. And actually, the Provera was the 
culprit here. That was the problem. The second problem was, is these women began the hormones in general between 60 and, and 79 years of age, and they were compared to women who were 50 to 59 years of age. And the 60 to 79 year olds were the ones who had the increased risk of breast cancer. Now they did get the estrogen and the Provera, but they would be at more risk anyway because they were older. But it, 10 or 12 years later when those study the same study was done but they brought the years together so that they looked by age if you start in your estrogen window almost everything that was a risk went away okay you're board certified OBGYN you have many board certifications. Yes, I have. Reproductive medicine and uh, certified menopause practitioner, etc. Now, could other OBGYNs, OBGYNs that read your book, what could they say that they disagree with? That maybe if they watch this, that you can help them bring some light to? Well, the North American Menopause has recommended my book not only for the women, but the doctors who serve them. Because we know that 80% less women are taking hormones today than they were in 2002 right? because of fear and confusion. But in addition, the doctors who are in training or who have trained over the last 12, 13 years have also had less women. I mean, it's called the practice of medicine. They've had less patients to practice. I got you. So they have... Because of that old study. Right. That, that one, was skewed based on this right. synthetic hormone progesterone. That is right. Okay, so estrogen is, so you combine it, by the way, is there a complement of hormones that you're giving? It's not just estrogen, some are getting progesterone. You know, it depends. If they have a uterus, they only need estrogen. If they have, I'm sorry, if they don't have a uterus, they only need estrogen. If they have a uterus, they need estrogen and progesterone of some kind. But some women will need a complement. I mean, if there's 5% of women that have a thyroid problem. And when you give estrogen to a woman who has a thyroid problem, it means her thyroid hormones are going to, requirements are going to go up a little. Testosterone is sometimes needed, but it's not the place I start. See, if you change only one thing, you know what impact one thing has. If you change three things or two things, you don't know what... So you see that just by changing that one thing, maybe getting them eating a little bit better, but giving them estrogen yeah. replacement... Is a, is a game changer for their life. Oh, absolutely. Really? Oh, yeah. But and it's protective. I mean, it helps the heart. It helps absolutely, the lung. Makes yeah. you age better? You think they're getting longer? Well, they, like you a know, healthier life that's span? What it, it's not going to seem as long. I'll tell you. You have more energy. <laughs> you're going to have more energy. They're going to think better. They're going to perform better. They're going to enjoy sex more. They're going to enjoy their relationships more. They're going to have a higher level of work performance. Yeah. So estrogen does all of those things. Yeah. But if it's not you and you don't want it, okay. I mean, you can still work to take care of the sum of you. You can use alternatives to hormones. I'm not saying you have to have it or you're just okay. miserable. What I'm saying is that if you want to optimize your life and get the most benefit, that goes something that is proven to be safe and beneficial for most women, then th don't be afraid to try it. Now, you, you know, there's this new popular word going around, uh, hacking the system. You know, like you hack a computer. In this, they call it biohacking. Would you say that this is almost like a cheat? Like, you know, some people could either take advantage of what you know now in modern medicine or not. That if a woman is in her 60s or 70s, that this is a bit of a cheat, like cheating Mother Nature in a way, where you could f mimic the way they felt when they were younger. Is there some truth to that? There is some truth to that. I want to be cautious to say it's a fountain of youth or anything. Okay. I always tell women, what I say is estrogen and hormone therapy is a five-year renewable option. And the reason I say that is because in five years, two things happen. You may change and the data may change. Okay. okay, so I never try and commit for life. We're just talking about from what your history is, for the foreseeable five-year window, I say, go ahead and try it because it makes All sense right. for you. Tell me about that 70-year-old woman again. Okay, so a 70-year-old woman comes in. She's basically healthy, mm -hmm. right? But she's starting to read about this. She reads your book. Mm -hmm. She wants that edge. She wants a better memory, uh, better hair, nails, uh, all of those things, libido. Right. She's going to benefit too? If she has never been on hormones, I would be having to individualize very specifically for her to start hormones at that time. Now, local or vaginal estrogen, that's okay, because that has been shown not to uh, cause any downside. And even if you currently or in the past have had estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, still does not increase risk of recurrence or death. For that, yes, okay, go for it. But to take it you know, orally or on your skin or other, you know, systemically, 
I would have to individualize and I would go for alternative approaches for for her and encourage other things first. Now women, especially in the 90s, were living like five years, seven years longer than us. And mm -hmm. that's when they were taking their hormones. Do you think that that contributed to their longer life? I think if they the started they were taking hormones, if they started it in their estrogen window and didn't develop reasons they couldn't take it along the way, then on an individual basis, some women will continue. There's about 7% of women who will be on it. I mean, one lady told me, look, when I die, slap one on the coffin and put me in. I'm not going nowhere without it. So that's what I can say. But as I said, if it's not your cup of tea, all isn't lost. You can still use alternative approaches. There's a lot that a person can do to take care of the sum of you. You have to invest the time and the energy in yourself if you want to get the ROI, which is a better, a better life. Is estrogen making kind of a comeback? That means, you know, there were some negative studies that were taken out of context, like you mentioned, with right. some of the synthetic combinations of hormones. Is it now becoming mainstream that it's good? It is. It's protective. In my career, estrogen has gone from the best to the worst, best to worst, and it's, it's best again. It's best again. It's back, and you're the expert. You know, I want to thank you for coming on the show. This my was, pleasure. Uh, so, you get the book, where do you get the book? It's available at all bookstores, on Amazon, where Barnes & Noble, wherever you shop for books. And uh, some women read the book and they get mad, your wife said. Yeah. That they're going, wait a minute, I didn't know this. Why wasn't I told this? Right. Right? And some women are very happy. Well, you know what? If you find something in there, contact me and let me know. Because I want to know what you think. And the fact of the matter is that hormones will be beneficial for most women but it takes an explanation in context of who you are. And the feedback is great so far on the book? Oh, yes. They're loving it? What yes. about the medical community? The medical community has given me a thumbs up. It's been good. Okay, well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks so much. Uh, it, it, was, it was a pleasure. Good stuff. You've been watching the Randy and Krista show. We'll be right back. All right, it was nice. That, what do you have to say? Uh, that was really interesting, Randy. I feel like maybe you even want to take estrogen I do. now, huh? You know the way I am. If somebody <laughs> comes on the show and it sounds good and it sounds like a quick fix, right? Yes. Yes. I'm all over estrogen, but okay. it makes sense what he says and the fact that right. he sees complete transformations mm -hmm. in his practice. And mm -hmm. I guess he goes into a lot of the science, a lot of the application in his book, because it's not just a quick fix. He wanted to make sure he told me that, that it's, you know, you diet. He, he calls it the sum. He's the got sum a, of you, which is wonderful. The SUM. And that, yes, the SUM, which is right. We are. We're so, we're so complicated as human beings and we're multifaceted, mind, body, and spirit. And so I loved how, because I think about my mom or my friend's mom. So now they're 70. Maybe they've had hysterectomies. They've had breast cancer. They haven't taken hormones. And that was really inspiring to hear. It, it's not too late. Even if you're past your window, it's not too late with lifestyle and maybe topical treatment. And then, you know, really kind Kind of like he said, if it's not your cup of tea, there's so many other things you can do. So it's educate and empower yourself and make your own decision from there. And then it's a co-creative process with your medical practitioner. Yeah, good. And in the book, he's going to help women navigate, find the right doctor, what to look for in a physician yes. that specializes in this topic. And if a woman is in her late 40s or early 40s and she has the symptoms he's talking about, they should look into estrogen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this book is a game changer. As soon as we get into our 40s and where we can help our mothers, our sisters, our friends, our neighbors, people just don't know this information and they, they can go on this trajectory of suffering that's really completely unnecessary. Now, when we're doing the show and you're in your 50s and I'll be in my late 80s. Are we going to keep uh, it up that You're going to be taking estrogen. I want to see to it that you're taking estrogen I, in your 50s. That, hey, I'm not waiting to be fully in menopause one year after, right? Missing a period. I'm going to go Because you're happy all the months. time. Anybody that knows you, everybody knows Chris is happy. So when you start getting those symptoms of being bitchy, he says, Are you going to call 50s, me out? Who's going to be the I one will. that's okay? And I'm just going to hand you uh -huh. uh, uh, some estrogen <laughs> that I get bootlegged over to me. I'm going to thank you. Compounded or pharmaceutical? So thank you, by the way. And people need to know, Krista <laughs> gets the guests on the Randy and Krista show almost every time so that's true. so thanks that's again true. this guy's good it was it was a great interview you're such a great interviewer it was a Krista. pleasure to watch all right well you've been watching the randy krista show i'm randy alvarez krista recchio i'm krista recchio thanks everyone for being here